could be a gangster nigga that just ain't my lane. Those are dread and you get dressed, we call that just being the main. Oh, Some grew up in the streets, around the streets, the same the same. Maybe right. hopping off the porch at 25, swear you blame. They be changing their demeanor when they get around these hoes. How you got this shit on live but steady go against the coat. Oh, no. You put that gun to our face and it was then I watched you fold. Then you tried to play and flip that shit on me, that's what you told. <laughs> Hey, we need to tell the projectionists their sound, but no picture. Sinning the opening scene of this movie gets you this many sins. One ring to rule them all. So wait, the one ring is supposed to control everyone who wore the other rings, right? We're told later that the race of men were turned into the Nazgul, but it didn't affect the elves and dwarves at all? Apparently Sauron put on his ring and tried to control the dwarves and elves by yelling, Go ring, and all he got was sparks flying out of his fingers. The one ring didn't work on the elves or dwarves because they were naturally resistant to their power, whereas men are weak and can be corrupted. If you were to pay attention during these movies, you'd realize that this is a recurring motif throughout the trilogy. What the f*** is Sauron reaching for? Just kill the guy! You have this huge mace for killing! This is called characterization. The movie is showing that Sauron is arrogant and overconfident, which ultimately leads to his downfall. When you see Gandalf magically transport like this, don't you wonder why he doesn't use magic more often in crucial spots during the trilogy? Not really. I mean, his magic has limitations. It's not all powerful. What about this ring of yours? Is that staying too? It's in an envelope over there on the mantelpiece. Gandalf should probably know that that's not true because Bilbo had no time to put it in an envelope, but he goes over to the mantelpiece expecting to find it anyway. This is actually another example of characterization because the movie is showing how much Gandalf trusts Bilbo regardless of the ring's effect on him, while simultaneously showing the ring's effect on Bilbo's mind. What the f*** was Frodo doing for the last 20 minutes after Bilbo disappeared? Looking for Bilbo in places other than Bilbo's house? Think about it for a second, Jeremy. Frodo was in the middle of a huge crowd that started freaking out when Bilbo disappeared. With all the commotion, it would have been very difficult for him to get here quicker. Gandalf sees the freaking eye of Sauron when he stupidly tries to touch the ring, but yet he still needs to do research to figure out what the ring is. Doesn't he have more than enough information at this point to give Frodo a head start before the ring wraiths show up? Not really. I mean, for all he knows, it could just be one of the many rings of power, not Sauron's OG ring. This one of the nine is terrible at his job. Isn't the ring supposedly calling to Sauron? I mean, why is he even sniffing? If his nose worked, he clearly would smell the hobbits, or the ring. If the Nazgul can't detect the ring two feet in front of their faces, why didn't Gandalf just find a container for the ring that he could magically seal, or at least lock, and throw away the key so no one could get into it? Okay, the Nazgul are drawn to the ring, but it's not as if the ring is a precise GPS. What's happening in this scene is the Nazgul being aware that the ring is close, but not knowing exactly where it is. Also, the ring's power is stronger when someone is tempted to wear it, which is why the Nazgul has trouble once Sam stops Frodo from putting it on. Bad guy doesn't like water cliché. Okay, here you say that he doesn't like water, and later you say that he's afraid of water, so I'm gonna say that you're implying the Nazgul are afraid of water, which is not true. The reason they can't go in is because the river is too deep for the horses and his armor would weigh him down, meaning he would drown. If the ring can will itself to land perfectly on Frodo's finger, then why the f*** can't it just will itself to fly off into the air and roll its happy way back to Mordor? Are you telling me that you think landing on someone's finger and rolling back to Mordor by itself are in any way comparable tasks? Are you dumb? At all times they feel the presence of the ring, drawn to the power of the one. Until it's convenient for them not to be drawn to it. Nope, I already explained this one, so here's another sin. If you look really hard, you can see Tom Bombadil in this shot. Hold on, you guys constantly harp on your point that the books don't matter, so why the fuck are you sending something that was only in the books? Gotcha, bitch! I know the hobbits are here for comic relief, for the most part, at least early on, but damn. Nobody is anywhere near that stupid to light a fire on a tower at night when you're hiding from supernatural hunting machines. I mean, there are millions of people who think that it's funny when you start saying dumb shit about movies, so... Strider says he's just going to have a look around when he leaves the hobbits. Where did he go and how far away? He didn't see the fire immediately and start running back to slap all the hobbits for starting one? And he didn't notice the Nazgul anywhere while he was looking around? Okay, there are literally hundreds of explanations for all of this shit. For example, he could have been so far away that he wasn't able to get back before the Nazgul. Maybe he didn't see them because he was looking around a different place, etc, etc. The point is that these questions are not sins because they have plausible answers. Oh, these bad guys are afraid of water and fire. Wow, so Earth is like the only major element they're not afraid of? They're not afraid of water. In fact, later in the movie, they actually ride their horses into a river when they're chasing Arwen, which is straight up proof that you're full of shit. You know the Athelas plant? Athelas? Kingsfoil. Kingsfoil, ah, it's a weed. Weed is the answer to everything. Jeremy sounds suspiciously like my roommate. 
Arwen has the ability to summon a tsunami of water horses. What a strangely specific ability. Jesus Christ, I'm losing my patience. Just because she can do this doesn't mean that this specifically is her power. She mentioned earlier that once she crossed the river, the power of her people would protect her, and that protection is taking the form of the water horse stampede because the Nazgul are trying to ride their horses across the water. Is there really nothing that Sauron can do about the eagle? Isn't he a powerful wizard? Doesn't he cause a f***ing avalanche from hundreds of miles away later in the movie? He spins Gandalf around and closes doors with his mind, but an eagle is just too tall of an order. I mean, yeah, in order to take out the eagle, Saruman would literally have to hit a flying target. Just how easy do you think that is? Destroy it! So Elrond knows this is a ring of supreme evil. All the evil in the world can be ended by throwing the ring in the fire, but he lets Isildur go without a fight. He could have thrown him into the fire and then ran out screaming, Oh no, Isildur fell into the fire. Whatever will we do? Oh, the humanity. Everyone always seems to say this, but the fact of the matter is that this would not work out at all. Elrond obviously doesn't want to fuck up the alliance between the elves and men, and people would obviously know that Isildur didn't just fall into the lava. They'd see right through that. You have my sword. And you have my bow. And my axe. You mean the axe you just shattered while trying to destroy the ring? No, he means the axe that he had strapped to his back. Hyper-observant, my ass. Where did they get sausages? Did they make them themselves out here in the wild? Or are they carrying raw meat casings for 40 days without refrigeration and then eating them? They were carrying raw meat casings around. That's it. That's the sin. How does Gimli not know about this? Or Gandalf? This obviously happened a long time ago. Sure, there's no internet or phones, but word should have traveled faster than this. How? An entire kingdom got slaughtered, and for all we know, there weren't any survivors, so how would word have gotten out? Gandalf said it was a four-day trip through the mines, but it takes the Fellowship, like, a couple of hours, if that, to get to the other side. You're saying this? Because the movie never explicitly states the time period it takes to get to the other side. However, just because we didn't see them camp out overnight in the mines doesn't mean it didn't happen. Why would the mirror show his friends making troubled glances? What can be learned from that? I could have told you that. It's showing Frodo that the Fellowship is losing faith in their mission and faith in Frodo. The uruk throws a shield at Aragorn's neck that has a neck-sized hole at the end of it. Jeremy points things out on the screen, cliché. What are you doing? Tomatoes, sausages, nice crispy bacon. Previously on Lord of the Rings. And right off the bat, I'm starting this video exactly how I start all my TV Sins videos. Jeremy hates previously on segments cliche. Also, this specific previously on sin is extra stupid, because the purpose of this flashback is to set up Gandalf's transformation into the White Wizard. The setup here at the beginning is paid off when the reveal happens later. Middle-earth rules say that a falling wizard can catch up to his falling sword and a falling balrog even when those things have a 20-second head start. Well, it really depends how far the fall is. Gandalf has significantly less surface area than the balrog, meaning that he will fall at a faster rate. So if the drop is long enough, he could definitely catch up. He hates them. I know Gollum's not exactly smart, but why would he talk so loudly to himself if he's trying to actually sneak up on the hobbits and surprise them? Like you just said, Gollum is not very smart. Besides, in this moment, he's not thinking about how to strategically sneak up on the hobbits. He's far too obsessed with the ring to think about that. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! Looks like meat is back on the menu for about ten orcs. The other ones in the background appear to be happy with their maggoty bread. Or they're prepared to fight their way to the carcass to get some meat. I mean, they are orcs after all. They have no problem fighting each other for food. No one's gonna save you now. There is no way that one of the riders of Rohan was able to throw his spear from this distance to kill a crouching orc. Why not? Care to explain? See, this scene is weird because it could be true, but he doesn't offer an explanation, so it seems like he's making a claim that he cannot prove. <laughs> Make it look like the character died when 90% of the audience knows he didn't die cliché. The Sins writers are yet again demonstrating that they don't know what a cliché is. Red sun rises. Blood has been spilled this night. Is Legolas serious? So every time blood spills, a red sun rises? 
So there should be a red sun for like at least half the trilogy, right? This is a fantasy world where literal magic exists, but this is what you're questioning? I would cut off your head, dwarf, if it stood but a little higher from the ground. You would die before your stroke fell. I know we need to establish that Legolas has become a blood brother to Gimli, but this is way out of line for his character and stupid. It's really not out of his character though. We see a few times throughout the trilogy where Legolas is protective of his friends and he acts impulsively because of that. We are no spies. The first clue should have been when we hailed you while your backs were turned and we had no reason to give away our position. Jeremy, do you know what spies are? Spies are meant to gather information, and Aemir thinks that, by hailing him down, Aragorn could be trying to get information about Rohan through talking to him. We left none alive. Instead of asking the writers if they remember killing people as memorable as hobbits, or if they even remember stacking two small childlike creatures who don't look one bit like orcs on the death pile, Eamor chooses the all I remember is that everybody died story to keep us in quote unquote suspense. They literally explain what hobbits look like though, and that's when Aemir says that he doesn't recall killing anyone like that. The assumption is that the hobbits died, but were not placed on the pile, which would have been entirely possible. Also, you pronounced Aemir as Eomer. Good luck fending off the nerdy fanboys. First off, the Nazgul really need to stop shrieking and giving away their position. Secondly, you tracked Frodo to the marshes and once again can't locate the ring mere feet in front of you. First, the shrieking is a tactic to induce fear, which is a very common motif throughout these movies. Sauron and his servants use fear to break the spirit of their enemies. And second, you are straight up lying in this sin. The Nazgul did not track Frodo to the marshes, he's simply flying over the marshes to Mordor. Think of it as a flying sentry. Mr. Frodo! Also, a closed fist is enough to quiet a powerful magical evil ring. I explained this in the first video, but what's actually happening here is Sam interrupting the ring's influence on Frodo's mind. A fist around the ring has nothing to do with it. It's Sam speaking that lessens the connection between Frodo's mind and the ring. How the hell does this actually work? How did they not see them? If you watch the scene carefully, there's actually a large rock in front of where Frodo and Sam end up hiding, which blocks them from the immediate view of the Easterlings. Aside from that, the editing does not necessarily show a one-to-one -one shot for shot time frame, meaning that the cuts between the Hobbits and the Easterlings are meant to build suspense, but are not strictly accurate in representing how this all happens chronologically. Wow, the flag waited until the perfect moment to break her spirit. Well, if you had actually done any research for this video at all, you would have found out that the flag breaking away from the spear was unintentional. The wind was just so strong that day that it happened on accident, and they kept it in the final movie. I told you to take the wizard's staff! Is the staff the sole source of Gandalf's power? Didn't he lose the staff and fall with the Balrog for days and days and fight that demon with a sword? Yes, but the staff helps to concentrate and control a wizard's powers. It's not the source, but it's a very useful tool. This fall would kill some people and break bones in pretty much anyone except Grima Wormtongue. What? Falling down stairs should break your bones or kill you? What the hell kind of drugs are you on? Have you never seen a little kid fall down the stairs and end up being completely fine? Who the fuck is breaking bones or dying from this? When last I looked, Theoden... Not Aragorn was king of Rohan. Yeah, well, last I looked, Theoden got his f***ing kingly mind all invaded by the evil sorcerer and shit, so maybe shut your pie hole and let someone who hasn't f***ed up lately do the planning. Jesus, you're dumb. You're essentially saying that a monarchy should let an outsider give the orders because the rightful monarch made a mistake. Aside from the fact that the mistake was really not Theoden's fault, that ain't how monarchies work. Aw, she thinks she's Mulan. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the movie cliche. <laughs> Andy Serkis isn't getting nominated for an Oscar in this scene. Absolutely agreed. Take a sin off, damn it. I realize marching to Mordor must be brutally boring, but none of these soldiers looks up to see the not really even hiding hobbits? It's actually been proven that most people don't tend to randomly look up without being prompted to. I'm pretty sure Legolas can shoot arrows faster than this, but I guess we need more time to get acquainted with the war. Did you miss the part where this scene is in slow motion? I think you missed the part where this scene is in slow motion. Where is he? He fell. You had no chance anyway, cliché. That's not a cliché, my dude. He no longer cares for growing things. Did this movie just turn into Fern Gully? Nope, shut the fuck up. It would grieve you then to learn that he is dead. How does Wurren travel fast enough for Faramir to know that Boromir died alone in the forest, but not fast enough for that message to also contain the words, by the way, don't kill or capture the two ring-bearing hobbits that were friends of your dead brother Boromir? There's a deleted scene where Faramir finds the boat that Boromir's dead body is in. Therefore, Faramir knows that Boromir is dead, but he doesn't know the context of his death. 
That guy must be half elf, half Wilhelm. Sinning the Wilhelm scream. Was taking a long time to say. Okay, so speak English then. All the Ents nodded when you made that You Aren't Orcs proclamation, so all of you understood that. You're basically saying that people of a non-English speaking culture should speak English simply because it wouldn't take as long as their native language. That's racist. No one could possibly fall for the Aragorn might be dead routine at this point, but the movie keeps wasting time on it. The movie is not trying to make you think that Aragorn is dead. You shorten the clip from the movie in order to remove the context. The clip is simply showing Aragorn getting up after the explosion. Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Hey, yo, motherfucker, what's good? Take a look at all the time I took. Mess for the crap and I'm back for the racks and I'm doing everything that I said I would. Make a little money and invest this green. Wake up in the morning, manifest this dream. Just big clean like an M16. And the too heavy, can't deadlift these. Broke in the business and I got big bills. Plus all the perks and I don't flip pills. All about the grind, I'm a can't sit still. But I braid all night, I'm loving the quick thrills. I've been about it when I was a juvenile. Shout out my haters, I'm planning your funeral. Talking about me, but you bitches delusional. Shit on my name, but you live in a cubicle. Got the bars that I can't stop now. When this ring was forged, it was made to withstand almost all destruction and apparently any mud and filth that was covering it just a minute ago. So you more or less acknowledge that the ring is magic, but you still question it? Anyways, the ring suddenly being clean is symbolic of its influence on the hobbits' minds. Its sudden cleanliness represents their unnatural desire to have it. Andy Serkis isn't getting nominated for an Oscar in this scene. And just like last time, I've gotta remove a sin for this, cause I absolutely agree. Oh no, who's gonna make the trip to Mordor to throw this thing in the fire? I mean, it must have similar powers to the One Ring if it can make Pippin try and steal it from Gandalf. No, that's just your random assumption. I mean, you've already mentioned how stupid and impulsive Pippin can be, so I'm failing to see why you don't think he would do this. Pippin doesn't remember that in Raiders of the Lost Ark, that didn't work. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the movie cliché. Does Pippin know any more than Sauron does right now? Pippin doesn't know where Frodo is, or even if he's still alive. And he should know that Pippin isn't the hobbit he's looking for because Frodo has put on the ring several times and he has seen him. What's the point of this sin? You said that Pippin doesn't know any more than Sauron, which is obviously not true. Pippin knows that Frodo has the ring, and he knows that Frodo is going to Mordor to destroy it. And then you said that Sauron should know Pippin doesn't have the ring because he's seen Frodo with it, but that is not true. Sauron has no idea that Frodo has the ring, which is actually a very good piece of characterization for him. He underestimates the hobbits, which is why he doesn't realize Frodo is carrying the ring to Mordor. Why should we ride to the aid of those who did not come to ours? Oh my god, you asshole. Because the entire plot of the Two Towers, that's why. What? The plot of the Two Towers? Why should that make him want to help Gondor? This makes zero sense whatsoever. Enemy thinks you have the ring. Seriously? Can Sauron not distinguish between seeing stone communication and ring communication? Don't you think he'd have the metadata to understand which is which? Not necessarily. As far as we know, they're both simply forms of communication. Also, I already explained how Sauron is underestimating the hobbits as part of his characterization. It's pretty to look at, but Minas Tirith is definitely the least practical city ever built. It's basically shoots and ladders come to life. This is explored further in the book, but Minas Tirith was built on the principle of defense being of the utmost importance. The multi-tiered structure of the walls allowed the defenders to rain arrows, oil, and rocks down on the attackers from above in multiple kill zones, so an army laying siege to the city would have to breach several different walls instead of just one. Sauron has yet to reveal his deadliest servant, the Witch King of Angmar. So even though no mortal can apparently kill him, he was easily fought off by Aragorn with a couple of waves of fire. I've looked this up, and I'm gonna give you my favorite answer. The Nazgul use fear as their chief weapon, and they usually fight against people who are scared of them. However, Aragorn had no fear whatsoever and took them by surprise, which allowed him to drive them off easier. I can feel his blade! Yet he can't detect you or the ring, even though you're literally 30 feet from the gate. Okay, you're misunderstanding the Nazgul and their attraction to the ring. They can't simply feel its location. They can sense the general direction of it, but they can't tell exactly where it is. Are there really people just hanging out around the beacons just in case they need to get lit? A lot of these are on top of snowy mountains. Who's camping out in the very unlikely event they will need to light them? 
Why is any of this a sin? They obviously have rotations of people who camp out on the mountains as a precaution. Why is that a mistake that the movie made? Oh, there's another guy that's half man, half Wilhelm. Sinning the Wilhelm scream. Almost falls, but obviously wasn't going to fall cliche. The CinemaSins writers continue to misunderstand what a cliche is. You wish now that our places had been exchanged, that I had died and Boromir had lived. I wish that. Yes, but do we really give a shit, though? Yes, we do, because we are not dead inside. This is a pretty shot, but the logistics of getting up to this cliff and the reasons for holding this meeting in this location are questionable at best. Uh, no. The logistics of getting up to the cliff are totally fine, because we see that there is a path leading up to it later, and the reason they would choose to camp here is actually pretty logical as well. The cliff is an easy place to defend in a pinch. The enemy would have to climb up the mountain to get to the king. Oh, I see. There's a road here. The existence of which totally makes sense. You just randomly say this as if people are just supposed to take your word for it. What do you think you are? Organized religion? You would think with that kind of destructive power, the siege of the city would be pretty quick, but nope. It goes on for hours and hours. Right, because they have a limited amount of catapults that are very cumbersome, and the defenders actually end up fighting back. Abandon your post! Oh, so this is the moment when Denethor's gone too far. Yeah, the moment he literally tells his men to give up. What are you, a fucking coward? This battering ram is truly awesome. It's a feat of imagination, but wow, someone actually thought to spend way more time on this than necessary. Let's make it huge, and then we'll carve it into a wolf, and oh, oh, let's put a fiery stove in its mouth. I've already explained this to you, but I'll explain again. Sauron and his servants use fear as a weapon. Grond was designed to strike fear in the hearts of their enemies, which would make them lose hope and give up. Arise! Arise, riders of Theoden! How many people of Gondor do you think died in the time Theoden was giving this f***ing speech? Complaining about Theoden's speech. That's where this many sins. I would feel great relief that the Witch King is dead, but he never really did anything of note in the entire trilogy except stab Frodo's shoulder. So he did do something of note then. Oh, and by the way, he also kinda sorta killed the King of Rohan? Oh, come on. I know it's a nice surprise that Sam has the ring in his pocket, but there's no way he would have been able to cut the webs from Frodo's neck, then grab the ring and the sword all before the orcs came down to take him. Why? Just because you say so? I'm just supposed to take your word for it? Nah, I don't think I will. There's so many of them. Yeah, why didn't any of these millions of soldiers get sent to Gondor? Because they're guarding Mordor. Do you think that every single soldier should have gone to Minas Tirith? Who are you, David and Dan during the final four seasons of Game of Thrones? Eagles. The eagles won't fly over the lands of men for fear of being shot down by arrows. But now they have no trouble flying all the way to the mother Black Gate of Mordor where orcs and Nazgul and Sauron live. The point of this scene is to demonstrate that the eagles have finally realized that a Sauron victory would mean the end of their race, so they finally decided to help. Fault stops right where the good guys are. Are you forgetting that this movie has magic in it? I think you're forgetting that this movie has magic in it. God damn. Merciless to the pitiful person who persistently persecutes the work I do. Now my purpose is purposely irking you. Fuck what you heard. I'm a certified truth when I hop in the booth and get horrid. Send word to enemy forces. Desert your post, you little Instagram warriors. For the war's been won by the one that was said to rule them all. It's me, the Lord of the Ring, an evil sorcerer summoning the dormant orcs to swarm the forts of Moria, massacring the dwarfs.